Okay, enough is enough. I should not be sidetracked anymore. No one cares about Mac OS anyways, and who would save an old Nexus 7 just to install Linux on it? I put it back as a dust collector right after making the last video. Now let's refocus ourselves to Linux desktop. This time, I want to challenge myself with three distributions in one video, all of which advertise themselves as easy to use or beginner friendly. Linux Lite, PC Linux OS, and Zorin. And I will try what almost every new Linux user would do, dual boot with Windows. I want to see just how easy they are in reality to use for a new Linux user. Now let's begin. Let's start with downloading. On Linux Lite, it is quite easy to find a download page from their website. But there is no real download link on top of that page. I thought the information section would contain it. But instead, there are just some miscellaneous help links about the distribution. Right after that, it is the Buy Media section. In my understanding, one of the biggest arguments we Linux users use when trying to persuade others to use Linux is that it is free. But it is not uncommon to see distributions which brand themselves as beginner friendly putting sponsorship in the center of their download page. If my memory served me correctly, I think Ubuntu was doing it in the old days, but dropped it and elementary OS is still doing it. Now, this is the third one I know. I don't blame them for doing so because as a software engineer myself, I totally understand how hard it is to try to satisfy all the users' absurd requirements. I wouldn't do it without any money, so I admire all the distribution creators who would provide something they think is so valuable to the world for basically nothing. However, I'm just worrying about putting donation front and center may kill the very little interests and courage the new user finally musters up to try Linux. As I do not have better suggestion or solution for this, let's move on. The download button shows up after the zero dollar is selected here. User will be able to download the ISO for free. Next, we have PC Linux OS. I've heard a lot about this distribution ever since I started using Linux 10 years ago. I remember seeing its desktop screenshots looking exactly like Windows 7, but never got the chance to try it out because I judged the content by its cover. The official website looks so old school that it scared me away. If not for this video, I don't know when I will ever try it out. I know this is my shortcoming. I will try to overcome it going forward because I also don't want my viewers to judge my content by the ugly covers I made for the videos. So I'll make sure I give it a proper look this time. The issue I found when trying to download the ISO file this time is that after clicking the version I want on their website, for example, KDE desktop, and chose the mirror location, I ended up with a list of all variants, including MATE and XFC again. So I'm wondering why bother separating them in the first place. Finally, there is Zorin OS. I have to say, it has the best website design out of the three. It is easy to navigate and understand. Like Linux Lite, users can pay to use their pro version OS. But unlike Linux Lite, they also provide two free variants. From my perspective, I think the advantage this way is that users won't feel guilty for not paying them to use the system. I'm choosing the core version as I will be installing it on a quite modern laptop. Now, let's move on to the installation. I'm assuming when a person wants to try dual boot Linux with Windows, chances are that they want to keep the Windows for gaming, meaning a lot of them might have a Nvidia graphic card. So my plan here is to see not only how easy to do the installation, but also install the proprietary GPU driver after that. I will skip the USB burning process, but I highly recommend the new users to look at a tool called Ventoy, which is a great application to turn your USB device into multi-OS boot-up device. All you need to do is to copy the ISO file onto the USB after the setup. And yes, it does support Windows besides almost all the Linux distributions on the market. You can check out my other video to learn more. 
For dual booting, we will start again with Linux Lite. By pretending to be a new user, I was able to find the installation guide from their homepage under support and documentation. The guide is very detail oriented. There is just one thing I want to mention when you follow this tutorial. You could easily install Linux Lite first and then Windows or vice versa. But the tutorial has both of these scenarios written in the same part. So make sure you read it properly and don't override the EFI partition if you already have Windows installed. Other than that, the installation went pretty smoothly. All I did was creating an ext4 partition for root and the installer took care of everything including the startup grub menu. The process of installing NVIDIA driver is quite intuitive as well. I clicked the install drivers button from the welcome window after the first boot up and the whole installation finished within minutes. The other thing I want to mention before moving on is that I noticed the system comes with the actual Google Chrome browser installed, not the open source Chromium or Firefox. And the other interesting thing is that the homepage of this browser is a fake Google search. It looks very similar to Google. Now let's talk about the PC Linux OS. In order to see how easy it is for the new Linux users, I spent some time to see if there is any official installation guide on their homepage. And the result is disappointing. Either there is no such thing or I didn't look into the right direction. Because when I went to the support section, I found they only mention their forum as the official help channel. The same is true on their about page. No installation guide, just the same friendly forum here. Now I have to resort my previous experience from Linux Lite. Create an ext root partition on the unallocated partition I shrank from Windows. Install the system there and hope it works. And it did. But anyways, it definitely should not be anyone's first ever distribution to try out. But wait, there's more. The other challenge I was faced with is there is no guide to install NVIDIA driver. I searched inside their forum and the closest thing I found was someone mentioned the NVIDIA Optimum tutorial in this post. I give it a look. The issue here is that it is using Bumblebee to switch between graphic cards. And Bumblebee only supports Intel NVIDIA combo and my laptop has AMD NVIDIA. Fine, I initiated my advanced user mode and found that first app is not working. And second, NVIDIA drivers were already installed from Synaptic, but the program just wouldn't run from the terminal. There is no NVIDIA X settings available in Synaptic either. With little to no material from their friendly forum, I gave up. But wait, there is even more. Okay, I promise this is the final complaint against this distribution. It does not support sudo. Although they don't have an official installation guide to help the new Linux users, they made sure why they don't give users sudo loud and clear, that I was able to find this post super fast. I had to search what this word meant too. Very user friendly. I bet I will install this distribution again soon. And even if I do, I'll probably make a video on how to install or use it for those who want to try it out. And that is if I can manage to figure out everything myself. Please let me and everyone know in the comment below if you have some useful tips about this distribution. Finally, I can move on to my offering Zorin OS. Some disclaimers here. I can't really give a fair comparison for this one because I have used Zorin Core several times in the past. So I'm not a brand new user here. However, I have not been doing dual booting any distributions with Linux for a very long time. I was either using Linux in a VirtualBox WSL system or on a full disk installation. So I hope I can still provide some value here. When I was trying to find the installation guide, I found not only does Zorin OS have the most modern website, they are kindly enough to put an easy to understand guide for all the users. It took me only seconds to find it, and the dual boot installation is in the installation type section. 
In my opinion, they don't even have to have this guide here because their installer is very self-explanatory. When it detects the Windows installation, you will have the option to install the system alongside Windows. I tried it twice. First time, I shrank the partition in Windows before going into the Zorin Live CD, and the installer picks up the correct empty partition to install. And the second time, I didn't modify any partition in Windows, and the installer will have an easy-to-use interface for users to decide how many spaces they want for each system. I think this is borrowed from Ubuntu or Linux Mint, if I'm not wrong, but still, it is a good design for new Linux users. I can literally finish the Zorin content right now without mentioning NVIDIA, because you don't even have to worry about it after the installation. The Live CD has a dedicated option to boot the installer with NVIDIA proprietary driver. And if you do that, NVIDIA will be automatically installed with the system. Now, let's summarize. Are all the user-friendly and easy-to-use distributions created equal? Of course not. At least for me, some I can't even find a proper guide. And for another, a guide seems like an overkill. I don't know if it is because I'm used to doing certain things when it comes to Linux. So I'm curious what is your favorite easy to use distribution nowadays. Let me know in the comment below. And I will see you next time. Bye.